Hello, I'm Sanjita. Today's dish is one that many of you will not have heard of. Prawn dangar or Goan prawn cutlets. In fact, it's rarely available in the restaurants of Goa. Usually made at our homes. The combination of coconut, fresh seasonings and prawns makes for an unusual starter and is an accompaniment to a full meal. I've taken a few liberties with my mother's recipe and simplified it. But she has certified that it tastes the same and looks the same. You can also make clam dangar using baby clams. So, well, let's get started. I'm going to go through the ingredients quickly. The list is in the description box as usual. First, the shrimp. They're peeled and deveined. I've washed and drained them. Small shrimps are just fine for this recipe. In fact, they can be tastier than the larger ones and less expensive. I've used medium shrimp because these are easier for me to source. Now to prepare the cutlet mixture. The coconut, onion, ginger, garlic, green chilies, the coriander leaves, salt, chili powder, turmeric and coriander powder and the tamarind paste or lemon juice. I'm going to pulse all the seasonings in the mixi once or twice. The point here is to blend everything together and break down the large pieces. Here's how it looks on processing. Coarse and dry. You can still see bits of onions and chilies. Transfer to a bowl and set aside. Now we're going to process the prawns. Make sure you've drained out as much water as possible. Once again, I'm only going to pulse a couple of times. The idea is to break down the prawns but not have a smooth paste. This is how it looks. It's coarse and there are still some bits of shrimp in there. Add the onion coconut mixture and mix well. I prefer to use my hands to do this job. You will find a few pieces of shrimp, even coconut and onion in there. And that's good. We want to have some coarseness in the mixture. This is how dangar are traditionally. The main reason to use a food processor or a mixie is to be able to bind everything together without adding binders like rice flour or besan or bread. You should be able to form a ball quite easily. This first part of the process where we bake the cutlet mixture is where my recipe deviates from my mother's traditional one. She would chop everything by hand, including the prawns. However, that makes it quite difficult to form the cutlets and to pan fry them. I have made it much simpler by using a mixie or a food processor. I have sacrificed the texture a bit, but the taste and the look is the same and I do think that the trade-off is worth it. It's so much simpler to fry the dangar now. There's no need to wait to marinate the mixture or anything. We can just head back to the kitchen and start frying. Let's go. I'm just going to taste it quickly and it's fine, it doesn't need anything. I'm going to mix the rice flour and the rice rava together. You can also use suji. Rice rava is cream of rice and suji is cream of wheat. I'm going to dredge the shrimp balls in this mixture before frying. Now to make the balls, about one and a half to two inches in diameter. Occasionally you will get a big piece of shrimp in there. Leave it be, it'll be a good surprise for anyone who finds it while eating. We have 16 balls. Dredge a ball in the rice flour mixture and flatten it to a disc. I've kept the cutlets a bit thick, about a centimeter in thickness. That'll give us something to bite into. But slightly thinner ones taste pretty good too. About three quarter centimeter thick. 
I'm going to dredge all the balls first and then fry them all together. Prawn dangar, make a good starter or an accompaniment to a meal. I'm going to serve them as a starter with green coconut chutney and beetroot chutney. Now is a good time to turn on the gas for frying. And the cutlets are ready for fry. I've used coconut oil, but you can use any other too. Make sure it coats the entire surface of the pan, otherwise the dangar will stick. I'm using a stainless steel pan, so this is important. The oil is hot. Place the dangar in the pan, making sure that there is a layer of oil underneath each one. The heat should be medium or medium high. This ensures that the prawns cook quickly. If the heat is low, the prawns will release a lot of water and the dangar will stick and become soggy. 16 dangar are just about fitting in my pan. Let them brown lightly on the bottom side before flipping them over. My pan is sloping slightly, so the far side needs a little oil. Prawn dangar are not usually available in restaurants in Goa. However, if you can find them, they are usually deep fried and have a lot of fillers and binders. Probably to make it easier to fry. Real dangar must have the characteristic flavor of prawns. The dangar are looking nice and golden. There is a wonderful aroma of spice shrimp in the kitchen. I cannot put on the exhaust while I'm filming, so all the smells have stayed in the house, which is a good thing because otherwise the neighbors would be running in to sample all these. A little more oil for the other side. I think I must have added about two teaspoons additionally. Now I have lowered the flame a bit. Stainless steel pans get quite hot. The dangar are thick and we are not deep frying, so you must make sure that they are cooked on the sides too. So I'm just standing them up on and off. And last of all, I'm just going to rest them along the side of the pan. This will ensure that the sides will cook as well. If you have to make a large number of dangar, that is multiple batches, I would recommend using a deeper layer of oil to ensure that the pan does not brown like mine has. Or you will need to wash the pan between batches. The prawn dangar are all done. It's best to serve them right away. If you have guests over, you can dredge the discs in rice flour ahead of time and fry them just before serving. It only takes about 5 minutes per batch. Before I serve the dangar, let's take a look at how they are. Brown and crisp on the outside and, if I could use an oxymoron, soft but firm on the inside. And here are my dangar at the table. I hope you enjoyed this very simple prawn dangar recipe and will be making it soon for your family and friends. I think you'll also enjoy the recipes in this playlist on non-vegetarian snack foods. 
do check it out i'll see you again next week thank you for watching